All right, so my name is Michael Roberts. I am the Chief Technology Officer of Hypergiant, just like the slide says. Hypergiant provides mission operations and decision support software and services to space, defense, and critical infrastructure. So there's three players in uh, the story that I'm gonna tell you this afternoon. Uh, one of them is our friends at the SNOW team who are providing the capabilities provided by the uh, Snowball Edge device, uh, the considerable capabilities. Uh, I won't go into that. You've, you've covered it very eloquently here. Um, I will add that our president of space and defense calls the Snowball a box of awesome. And uh, after a year's worth of experience with it, uh, I can concur with that. Uh, the second player is the United States Army. Uh, the US Army has a program called the Robotic Combat Vehicle. And that RCV program is split into three, uh, three types, uh, light, medium, and heavy, uh, referring to the size and capabilities of the respective vehicles. Uh, the image here is a prototype of a light vehicle. And the work that I'm gonna talk to you about really applies to all three. Um, but a lot of what we've been doing has been with uh, the, the light group. The third piece in the puzzle is a software platform that we provide called Command Center. It's basically a mission operations and decision support platform. Uh, they say never to read from your slides, but I'm gonna go ahead and read from my slide. Command Center is a real-time, highly performant, intelligent insights and actions platform designed for AI. Command Center supports multiple data formats and courses of action for a variety of specific use cases customized to your operational needs. By the way, our marketing department says hi. Uh, what that means to me is that Command Center provides you a 360 view of your data, more than 360, because it provides it in multiple layers. It brings your data together uh, visually. It draws attention to important elements within it. It provides you projections and recommendations, and it allows you in context to pull additional relevant data in order to make decisions. It's all about making decisions. You've probably seen slides like this uh, a few times in your life. But uh, we'll go ahead and go through it again. We've got a bunch of different kinds of data coming in, multimodal, across different um, spheres of action. Uh, we use machine learning and, and analytics to make sense of that data. And then finally, we uh, visualize it so we can provide insights directly to uh, the end user, which in this case is the warfighter. I won't get into great detail on these components. I will not read this slide. Uh, but I did want to point out that we've got a lot under the hood besides just the visual portion of uh, Command Center. There's uh, elements pertaining to the training and deployment of machine learning models and uh, data security, uh, and then also um, kind of a overall management tool. So this is the scenario that we're talking about here. Uh, these are the RCVs here out on the edge. Now, the RCVs are robotic. I emphasize that they are not autonomous. So they have operators in vehicles that are uh, behind the lines, but close by, and they communicate with the RCVs. So the mission of the RCVs is primarily uh, scouting, reconnaissance, and then support of uh, manned vehicles. So they're out there. There's a crew of two operators per RCV. So in this case, there'd be six people in this vehicle, two to operate the vehicle, and then four to operate the respective uh, two RCVs here. So we've got two of those vehicles here in the field. We've got four uh, RCVs. And then we have a single snowball or snowball collection, uh, processing that data. 
So the Snowball aggregates the data and hosts the applications at the company and the battalion level. The RCVs download their data to the Snowball uh, whenever they uh, have an opportunity to. Uh, remember earlier in Ramesh's presentation, he mentioned DDIL, when you're in an environment where uh, your uh, communications could be disrupted or interrupted or limited for some other reason. That's going to be very common in a combat situation, obviously. And then finally, urgent data is sent back to the continental United States uh, for use by you know, military or intelligence, whoever needs to, needs to know. So this is the scenario that we're working on uh, with RCV. We're working through the Army Futures Lab with the Army Applications Lab, or Army Q Futures Command, uh, Army Applications Lab. And uh, they're based in Austin as well as, as Hypergiant, so it's convenient for us. So this is kind of what an operator would see uh, in command center operating those vehicles. So, whoops, how do I go back? Red button, there we go. Yeah, so here we've got our four RCVs. And you can see that two of them have been compromised in some way, one of them severely. And then back here, the things with the little Wi-Fi <laughs> symbols on them uh, are the control vehicles. So the operator has observed that there's a problem with uh, two of the vehicles. One of them has a severe problem with the track failure uh, potentially being imminent. So they can call up more information on that vehicle and what the specific failure mode is. They can pull up uh, schematics and specifications. Uh, they can identify which parts specifically are going to be the problem. And then they can see a recommendation right here. The, in this case, the damage is severe enough that you would want to withdraw that vehicle. Um, sustainment is essentially the opposite of attrition. It's, the uh, effort to keep as many vehicles in the field operating as efficiently as you possibly can, uh, as opposed to losing them. And if we have uh, machine learning models that can uh, do predictive uh, maintenance effectively on the vehicles while they're in the field, uh, then that could be the difference between keeping that vehicle in the field uh, and losing it unexpectedly. So those previous two Images are uh, essentially mock-ups of what we want to put into command center for this application. Uh, the RCV vehicles don't exist yet. They're prototypes. We're working with the Army to define what the control capabilities are, are from our end. Um, we've got two snowballs on order for this application. We've been running three snowballs for another branch of the military. Uh, I cannot talk to you about that use case, uh, but I can show you a, a demo that is cleared for public consumption. And this is kind of an overview of some of the capabilities of Command Center when you apply it to multimodal uh, data. Right? So I'll talk a little bit about what's on here before I start the, the video. It's a very short video. Uh, so this is a globe view. You can kind of tell we're not zoomed out very far at the beginning, uh, but it works very similar to uh, Google Earth. You can kind of grab the globe and, and move it around. Uh, these data points here are uh, ships at sea. And then these little blue ones here are actually satellites. And if we were pulled out into the global view, you can sort of see it here, it, it shows them you know, out in space. So this is a management console. Uh, if you've ever used any kind of layered image software, you'll recognize something very similar. These show you the data layers that are visible currently. Um, a lot of this data comes from our partners at URSA. A little shout out to URSA. Uh, they provide uh, data for land, air, uh, sea, and space. So I'll go ahead and start the video here. All right, so you see we'll zoom in on North America. There'll be a brief moment where there's a ton of data on the screen. That is aircraft in flight right there. We turned it off immediately because it obscures everything else in the, in the video. 
Uh, the user's dragging the globe around here just to show you how smooth it is with, with all the data being displayed. Uh, this is running in a browser. You can sort of see the browser top at the top of the screen there. And so now we're seeing uh, air control uh, areas over uh, stadiums. And they're kind of hovering over different air control zones. Um, and when they click on it, you'll see a little pop-up show up on the right-hand side of the screen. And that is one of our, what we call baseball cards, where you can drill into additional information about whatever you've clicked on through the interface. So yeah, there you go, the baseball card. You can see it's very smooth operation, uh, works in, in multiple browsers. Um, we're working to improve the, the mobile capability. It works well on tablets, uh, but phones are a little challenging for obvious reasons. So that gives you a little idea, a little taste of how Command Center works and looks. I uh, finally want to point out that we're ready for service. We're currently deployed on IL-4 and IL-6, which are security levels, um, cloud security levels with the uh, uh, DoD. We have a Platform 1 certificate to field, and that means that we are deployable across the DoD today. That's why we're able to leverage what we've done for another organization with what we're now doing uh, for the Army. That should do it. Thank you.